Castle Point is an iconic New Zealand station with a lighthouse, camping ground and a rich history that was celebrated in 2010 with the publication of a book. Anders and Emily Crowfoot bought Castle Point in the 1990s, leaving 120 hectares just an hour from New York City for the 2,900 hectare property an hour out of Masterton. Castle Point's a large-scale sheep and beef property on the coast of the Wairapa. In round numbers, we're running about 20,000 sheep and 1,000 head of cattle. We're trying to be a high-performance sheep system, uh, so about 80% of our feed goes down sheep mouths. Uh, we're working on getting our lambing percentages up and the weaning weights up, and we're making slow progress, but the droughts over the last four years have not been very helpful on progress. We bought the station 12 years ago, and we emigrated from the U.S., and we had both, both came from farming families, but um, neither of us had made our living farming. Uh, we actually sold Emily's family's farm, our children of the seventh generation born there. Uh, but we were an hour out of New York City and the city was gradually encroaching on us. We had six-story apartment buildings at the bottom of the hill. And when Emily's father decided that it really didn't make sense to try and hang on to it, um, that freed up assets for us to move to New Zealand. The farming opportunities are the same as they always have been. And we are interested in, in livestock agriculture um, and pastoral grazing systems. And New Zealand does that better than anyone else in the world. Castle Point had been a very well-run property for a very long time, and that's one of the attractions in purchasing it. And the first year we were here, it was pretty much status quo. All the staff had agreed to stay on, which was excellent. And after we'd been here for a year and observed things, that's when we began to change things. But we haven't made any dramatic changes to the systems that were in place. It's really more a focus on a large scale of every animal's important and really trying to ramp ramp production up. Um, just because we're a big place doesn't mean you can be slack about the little details. There's been a big focus on infrastructure. When we arrived, they'd done a brilliant job of fencing as far as they'd gone, but many of those fences were sort of 30 and 40 years old, so they were in need of renewal. We've continued doing subdivision fencing, and then in this day and age, you have, they used to have 15 shepherds here. Um, now we've got three people that are full-time stock. So there's been a big focus on making stock management more efficient. When we came, there was no, no central stock laneway. And when you need, were shifting stock, it had to go through the flats, which were also best finishing area. So the finishing stock were getting interrupted by people and stock moving through. We've now put uh, all weather access going through 10Ks gate to gate from one end to the other. It's made a huge difference because it's now very easy to get through any time of year. Fencing here, it's a big issue because we have a very high wind run and being coastal, there's a lot of corrosion. We've done a couple things. One, we only batten in high pressure areas. If we batten on the hills, it makes it, they're very movie and it makes it very hard to repair fences. So we steer away from battens. We're also using 10 gauge wire which makes a very visual fence, which when you're moving big mobs is quite helpful because they can see it and hopefully have a bit more respect for it. And we also um, hope that the 10 gauge wire will last a bit longer than high tensile would. Basically, we work best by having as much external information given to us and, and bouncing around different ideas. And we thought it was important to have people with local knowledge and, um, and national knowledge to, to help us guide, guide us in their first few years. And it's evolved. We are um, more working holistically with the meat company in terms of a combination of, of store and prime. Um, so we've been working with with AFCO, uh, with our uh, with our prime lambs, and then um, they've been sourcing our store lambs as well and um, putting them with their finishers. This past year, we started working with Ovation, and I can see that developing more in terms of we're getting a lot of good feedback from the finishers on the rate of gain, and, and our lambs were doing 247 grams a day on average from weaning until slaughter. So we're really pleased with that. It says that, that our genetics are on track. With a background in computer science, Anders has been quick to introduce technology for on-farm efficiency. Stock manager Stu Neal explains. 
Well, what I've been using is an application on my iPhone, which is called iFarmer, which we have just started using in this business. It allows me to record all my stock numbers, stock weights, stock transactions, transfers, uh, purchase of stock, sales, basically in the field um, straight away onto my iPhone. So instead of having a notebook, piece of paper, put it in your pocket, getting it lost, um, it's all in here. And what I do with that is I take it home at night um, and I hook it up to the Castle Point wireless um, connection. Um, and this gets downloaded straight through to Anders' um, iPhone um, with iFarmer on his. And the advantage here is that it's information that I've gathered during the day and it's straight to the office um, virtually straight away. iFarmer has been one of the things where we're using direct data collection. Uh, before that, we tended to use paper and pencil, and then we'd bring it back and put it into spreadsheets and various other things for collecting data. Then once we've got it into the computer, um, we rely quite heavily on um, modeling with the likes of Farmax or um, nutrient budgeting with Overseer. Uh, we, we do use technology a fair bit here for recording systems. It just makes it a whole lot easier than relying on people's memories. Traditionally, it's up to 70% of the station's income was with wool, so it, it, the wire effort does grow very, very good quality wool. And there have been some exciting initiatives recently in trying to get wool positioned, you know, where it belongs as an ethically and sustainably produced fiber. And um, we've been very supportive of those initiatives, and, and we feel there's really been a generation of of people who don't know the, the values of wool, and um, its time has come. We felt that the station had a wonderful and, and rich history, and there had been talks since the time of the centenary of recording some of the events, and when we first came in 1998, we just felt that it absolutely had, had to be written down, and so um, we sat down with Nan and Peter Lang, and Peter had been the manager for, for 40 years, and you know, we, just between us, we all looked at different subject areas to cover, and then Peter did a, a lot of tapes of his memories, and he would take um, things like the development era or you know, the start of a fishing industry or creation of the golf club or the camping ground, and he made tapes, and then and after Peter passed away, Nan worked on those tapes and fleshed them out and transcribed them. And then when sadly Nan passed away, um, then Alex Hadley took up the reins and, and we, you know, between all of us collectively, we are thrilled with the, the outcome of the, of the book. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.